What is Celadone wear? Celadone ware is a type of Korean ceramic from the Koryo period made with translucent, pigmented glazes. Usually grey, pale blue-green, and olive in tone, Celadone ware from the 11th century was known for its simplicity. While examples from the 12th century were more complex. Often inlaid or stamped with decorative elements, such as black and white pictorial scenes. Who were some influential impressionists? The core group of impressionist painters was a close-knit group living in France. Some were even related. For example, the artist Bert Morizot was married to Manet's brother. Though Manet is not officially considered an Impressionist, despite his major influence on them. The following list includes a selection of artists who are considered the major Impressionist innovators. Claude Monet, 1840-1926 Monet favored plein air, outdoor painting and is known for his landscapes, especially his water lily and haystack paintings. He painted the smoky interiors of train stations, and the facade of Rouen Cathedral more than 30 times. The term Impressionism comes from a description of his painting. Impression Sunrise, 1873, by art critic Louis Leroy. Edgar Degas, 1834-1917, Degas was a painter, a printmaker, and a sculptor. And unlike other Impressionists, was not a fan of plein air painting. Instead, he preferred to explore the effects of artificial lighting and usually worked in his studio. He is particularly well known for his paintings of ballet dancers and his other famous works include El Absinthe. 1876, and a sculpture called Little Dancer of 14 Years. Now on display at the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. Bert Morizot, 1841-1895, Morizot's work focused on landscapes and domestic scenes that highlighted the female experience. She regularly showed her work at the salon and continued to paint professionally. Even after marriage to Eugene Manet, which was uncommon for the time. Morizot had a close professional relationship with her brother-in-law, Edouard Manet, and they clearly influenced one another. Some of her most recognizable works include The Cradle, 1872, and Summer's Day, 1879. Auguste Renoir, 1841 to 1919. Renoir was a close friend of Monet's and his work often features dappled light and outdoor urban scenes, such as Moulin de la Galette, 1876, which depicts colorfully dressed dancers at an outdoor dance hall in the Montmartre neighborhood of Paris. His paintings are often cheerful and beautiful and provide a snapshot of upper-class life in 19th century France. Mary Cassatt, 1844-1926, Cassatt was born in Pennsylvania but spent her career in France. A friend of Degas, 
she also completed most of her work in the studio and she was a major supporter of Impressionism. Even encouraging American friends and family to buy Impressionist art. Like Morizo, Cassatt focused on domestic scenes and the relationship between mothers and their children. Her work continues to be highly popular, and some of her well-known paintings include The Boating Party. 1893-1894, T, 1880, and The Child's Bath, 1893. She was awarded the French Legion of Honor in 1904. Camille Pissarro 1830-1903, Pissarro was a highly innovative artist who preferred plein air painting and drew inspiration from the countryside and rural peasantry, many of his paintings depict agricultural scenes. Pissarro applied thick globs of paint to his canvases, which didn't always win him favor with the critics, but greatly influenced the following generation of post-impressionists. Notable works include Avenue de l'Opera, Paris, 1898, and his many paintings of the village of Pontoise. What is the difference between a hand scroll, a hanging scroll, and an album leaf? A hand scroll is a roll of paper or silk that is unfurled to reveal text and painted images. Hand scrolls are kept rolled up when not being viewed. Cinematic in nature, the images are presented piece by piece. As the viewer works his or her way through the hand scroll. Though usually around a foot long, Hand scrolls can vary in length. Siagui's 13th century hand scroll titled Pure and remote view of streams and mountains, is nearly 30 feet long. Unlike a hand scroll, a hanging scroll can be seen all in one viewing and is displayed on a wall. Though not permanently. Even though hanging scrolls can be rather large, they were not intended for large public spaces, but for smaller, private viewings. An album is essentially a book of paintings, usually of similar subject matter. An individual painting is called a leaf. What is painting? Paint is a liquid mixture made of pigment, often a powder, and a binding agent such as water or oil. A painting is a two-dimensional surface, such as stretched canvas or wood panel, to which paint has been artistically applied. A wall mural, or a fresco, is also considered to be a painting. As is work on paper, such as an illuminated book manuscript or a hand scroll. Some of the most common types of paints used are oil paints, egg yolk tempura. Often used in Italy during the Renaissance, watercolors and acrylics, a modern, water-soluble paint. What was impressive about the doors of Bishop Byrne Ward?
the splendidly designed bronze doors of Bishop Bernward were built for the Abbey Church of St. Michael's in Hildesheim, Germany. The doors themselves are enormous over 16 feet tall and are the first example of monumental bronze sculpture made by the lost wax process since antiquity. Each door was made as one piece a remarkable technical feat. Considering the complex relief sculpture covering each door, notable for their masterful metalwork, the doors are also impressive due to their complex narrative imagery, which outlines both Old and New Testament events. Each door is divided into eight panels, each representing a specific biblical scene. A design likely inspired from manuscript illumination. Who are the young British artists? The young British artists, YBAs, are a loosely affiliated group of contemporary artists working in London. Many of whom trained at London's Goldsmiths College in the late 1980s. Many of the young British artists gained the support of wealthy patrons. Such as advertising magnate and art collector Charles Saatchi. The young British artists included Damien Hirst, 1965, who curated a show of YBA work at a warehouse in 1988, putting the group on the map. Other members, such as Gary Hume and Fiona Ray, exhibited in this early show. While others Rachel Whiteread, 1963, and Tracy Emin, C. 1963, did not, but are also considered YBAs. The work of these artists is very diverse. Gary Hume and Fiona Ray are primarily painters. While White Reed and Emin are known for their conceptual sculpture and installations. Who was Henri Rousseau? Henri Rousseau, 1844 to 1910, was nicknamed Le Douanier, meaning the customs officer because that was his profession. He was an amateur painter who began painting during Middle Age. Since he was not academically trained, his style was called naïve. He showed his work at the Paris Salon de Independence and caught the eye of influential artists who helped him to develop his artistic career. By 1858, he was able to devote himself to art full-time. His imaginative, Detailed paintings were inspired by 19th century symbolism and psychology and often feature exotic settings and primal themes. One of his greatest works is The Dream, 1910, which depicts a nude woman reclining on a sofa, a traditional art historical subject who has been strangely transported into a jungle. Wild fruit hangs from trees and exotic animals lurk in. The brush while a dark figure plays a flute-like instrument. Due to the complex symbolism of the painting. Rousseau wrote an accompanying poem in an attempt to at least partially explain the work. The most common interpretation of the dream is that it represents a woman sleeping on her couch in Paris. 
and as she dreams, her mind is transported to the jungle. Therefore, the dreamer has been merged with the dream. And the unexpected combination of elements, rendered with detailed realism, foreshadows surrealism. What is an arch? In art historical terms, an arch is a semicircular construction of blocks of material called voussoirs, which hold each other in place due to compression, and span an open space. This type of arch is known as a true arch. Other simple forms of arches include the corbelled arch, in which blocks of material are overlapped in order to span a similar opening. The true arch is stronger than a corbelled arch, especially when constructed out of stone. The pointed arch, rather than the round arch, provide superior support and was widely used in Gothic cathedrals. Who was Alfred Stieglitz? Alfred Stieglitz, 1864-1946, was an influential photographer and gallery owner who aimed to raise the status of photography to that of painting. Born to a German immigrant family, he was raised in New York City. And he formed a group of New York City photographers called Photographic Secession. With a handheld camera, he photographed the city capturing sensitive images of a gritty, urban landscape. Stieglitz also photographed cloudscapes, and said that the ever-changing clouds reflected his emotions. Besides his photographic work, Alfred Stieglitz made a significant contribution to modern art through his 291 gallery, located at 291 Fifth Avenue which promoted European modernism and supported the careers of many important 20th century artists, including Picasso, Matisse, and Georgia O'Keeffe, who he married in 1924. What does the Farm Security Administration have to do with art? In 1935, the Farm Security Administration, FSA, was established in order to document and communicate the devastating impact of the Great Depression, especially on farm workers and the rural poor. American economist Roy Stryker hired a team of photographers that included Walker Evans and Dorothea Lang, among others. Walker Evans, 1903-1975, had studied literature in Paris and was direct in his approach to photography. His work powerfully documents struggling families. Notably in West Virginia, during the period between World Wars I and II. Dorothea Lang, 1895-1965, had a photography studio in San Francisco, but when hired by Roy Stryker, she traveled to see firsthand what migrant farm workers had to endure. Her photographs, including Migrant Mother, 1936, Migratory Cotton Picker, 
1940. And wife of a migratory farmer in her makeshift tent home, are eloquent and forceful. What is Stonehenge? Stonehenge is perhaps the most famous megalithic structure from the Neolithic period. And an example of a large scale cromlech. Its name comes from the Saxon language and means the place of hanging stones. The site, located near Salisbury in England, about 80 miles west of London, was built over a thousand years starting from around 3000 BCE 17 enormous. Megaliths weighing up to 50 tons each remain standing in an approximate circle. Though scholars think the site originally included at least 30 megaliths. Altogether, Stonehenge is made up of around 150 simple. Non-decorated stones, some of which have fallen down and broken. At the center of the site is an altar stone, though whether the stone was used as such is unknown. It is unclear exactly how Neolithic people constructed Stonehenge. The blocks alone are extremely difficult to move and both scholars and amateurs have attempted to recreate the engineering marvel. The post lintel system is evident in the megalithic hanges themselves. And it is notable that no mortar was used to hold them together all of the joints are dry joints. It is possible that timber played a role in the construction of Stonehenge. Though any timber remains have since disappeared. What is El Escorial? El Escorial is an enormous monastery palace built by Spanish King Philip II in Madrid between 1563 and 1584 Philip II took over control of Spain after his father, the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V, abdicated. Philip was therefore one of the most powerful rulers in Europe. Controlling territories in Spain, the Netherlands, Milan, Burgundy, Naples, and even the Americas. Philip II was a devout Catholic and El Escorial combined a seminary, convent, and basilica with the royal palace. The main architect was Juan Bautista de Toledo until his death. When Juan de Herrera took over, eventually completing the project. The building design is reminiscent of Italian classicism. But it is formidable and severe, reflecting the power of the Spanish crown. Can a video game be a work of art? All works of art, but perhaps most obviously installation art, rely upon the participation of viewer to generate meaning. When you go to a gallery and look the art, your thoughts and experiences affect the meaning of the art you see and interpret. This exchange is naturally extended to the concept of game play and video games. Game theory and game art have been a fruitful source of artistic exploration for years. 
In 2001, the Massachusetts Museum of Contemporary Art exhibited Game Show. And in 2012 the Smithsonian American Art Museum held a show called, The Art of Video Games. The show's curator, Chris Melisinos, explained that through the video game medium. We are invited by the artist to inject our own morality, our own worldview, our own experiences into the game as we play it. And what comes out is wholly different from everybody that experiences it, the art of video games. Like other forms of digital art, video game art is very young. And generations of innovative artists will likely mine the medium for its theoretical and aesthetic potential in the years to come. Who was Vincent Van Gogh? During his lifetime, Dutch artist Vincent van Gogh, 1853-1890, was not well understood. And he died young, at the age of 37, of a gunshot wound. Although no gun was ever found, his death has always been considered a suicide. He suffered intense bouts of depression, spent time in an asylum in southern France, and is of course, famous for cutting off his own ear, though this story has its critics. A violent event that was documented in Van Gogh's self-portrait with bandaged ear, 1889. Although Van Gogh's troubled life receives a great deal of attention, it is his incredible artistic talent that endures. His paintings, such as The Starry Night, 1889, Bedroom in Alls, 1888. Still Life, Vase with Twelve Sunflowers, 1888. And his many expressive self-portraits are among the most highly sought-after works of art in the world. His goal was to create art that would appeal to everyone, not only the rich who could afford fine art. In Paris, he saw the brilliant colors of the Impressionists. And was fascinated by Japanese ukiyo-e paintings. Inspired by pointillism, Van Gogh experimented with fragmented brush strokes to create brightness and energy in his work. And he attempted to communicate intensity and emotion through expressive color and forms. His work was highly textured, dynamic, and an important part of the newly developing expressionist style, a modernist movement that also included Edvard Munch and later included Franz Marc, Vasily Kandinsky, and Ernst Ludwig Kirchner. Van Gogh was active for a mere 10 years, and during that time he produced some of the most iconic images in Western art, an empty chair, the lurching room at his home in Alls, the dark undulations of a cypress tree perched along the horizon. Who was Marcel Duchamp? Marcel Duchamp, 1887 to 1968, was one of the most fascinating and thought-provoking artists of the 20th century. He experimented with Cubism, Futurism, and championed Dada during an ever-changing and provocative career. 
Dushan continually questioned artistic convention at the most fundamental levels even the definition of a work of art. During his early career, he created the iconic nude descending 212 The Staircase, No. 2, 1912, which shocked viewers and critics at the Armory Show in New York in 1913. Though it garnered him a great deal of fame. The work blended Cubist and Futurist styles in its abstract depiction of the moving human form. Dushan is most closely associated with Dada and Surrealism. One of his most complicated works was 1915's The Bride Stripped Bare by Her Bachelors. Even, more commonly referred to as the large glass. The piece is large, and made of two panels of glass suspended with wire. It is divided into two halves. The top half is the bride's domain while aggressive bachelors dominate below. Highly enigmatic, despite many notes left by Dushan as to its meaning. Some critics believe the work is a commentary on art criticism itself. Duchamp's groundbreaking and complex approach to art continues to impact the art world into the 21st century. What are the Nazca lines? The Nazca lines are monumental geoglyphs carved lightly into the earth in southern Peru and were made by the Nazca culture between around 400 and 600 c. E. The lines form symbolic shapes, including animals and natural and geometric forms, such as a hummingbird, monkey, lizard, a flower, tree, and a spiral and trapezoid. These shapes, some of which are over 400 feet long, were made by removing a top layer of red pebbled earth to reveal a whiter surface underneath. Scholars wonder if the Nazca geoglyphs were depictions of constellations, or in some way linked to astronomy, but no conclusive connection has been found. It is possible the Nazca lines were an important part of religious ritual or were intended for a divine audience, as they are best seen from the air. What are the major periods of pre-modern Korean art? Under the influence of the Chinese emperor, the establishment of the Silla Kingdom resulted in a unified Korea in the year 668, around the time of the Tang Dynasty in China, and lasted until approximately the year 935. Silla rulers supported Buddhism, establishing it as Korea's official religion, and embraced Buddhist architecture, though no structures from the Silla Kingdom survive. Overlapping slightly with the unified Silla Kingdom was the succeeding Koryo Kingdom, sometimes spelled Goraio, which began in the year 918 and lasted until 1392. Artists from the Koryo period were known for their refined ceramics. What is the difference between the bridge and the blue riders?
The Bridge and the Blue Riders were both groups of German Expressionist artists who shared artistic values. Promoted the symbolic power of color. And believed that art could communicate powerful positive or spiritual messages to the viewer. The Bridge, known as German as Die Bruck, was founded in Dresden in 1905 by four architecture students. Fritz Blail, 1880-1966, Eric Heckel, 1883-1970. Ernst Ludwig Kirchner, 1880-1938, and Karl schmidt Radeloff, 1884-1976. Their name came from the philosophical writing of Friedrich Nietzsche. And they shared the philosopher's idea that the present day can positively influence the future, acting as a bridge to the future. The artistic style of the bridge artists was inspired by so-called primitive non-Western art. Such as African masks, which they believed was somehow more authentic than Western art. They were also inspired by nature and Russian literature. Key works produced by members of the The Bridge include Schmidt Totloff's Three Nudes Dune Picture from Nitten, 1913, and Kirchner's Street, Berlin, 1913, which depicts two prostitutes, one wearing a purple coat, against a bright pink urban background. Der Blaue Reiter, the Blue Riders, was another expressionist group founded in Germany. In Munich rather than Dresden. Members included the Russian painter Vasily Kandinsky, 1866-1944. And German artist Franz Mark, 1880-1916, who was killed during World War I. Mark was interested in the symbolism of the color blue. And he believed that blue was the most spiritual color. One of Mark's most recognizable paintings is The Large Blue Horses, 1911. Which depicts the backs and bowed necks of a group of deeply blue horses as if they are distant mountains against a burnt, orange sky. Kandinsky was inspired by Russian folk art and was deeply interested in art history and philosophy. Kandinsky associated realism with the negative aspects of materialism. And as his career developed, his art became less and less figurative. He explained that he wanted his art to inspire spiritual awareness in his viewers. Kandinsky was also inspired by the 19th century artist Whistler to give his paintings musical titles such as Composition for 1911, Improvisation 28, 1912, and even Contrasting Sounds, 1924. His work is also thought to be inspired by his synesthesia. A neurological condition in which one can see numbers, letters, or even sound as color. Kandinsky's theories and paintings on the spiritual quality of visual art were extremely influential for modern art. Expressionist paintings from both the Bridge and the Blue Riders made a major impact on 20th century art due to their philosophical goals and interest in expressive abstraction. Who was Camille Claudel? Camille Claudel 1864 to 1943 was an artist and sculptor who studied under Auguste Rodin. She led a troubled life, 
and after working in Rodin's workshop, began a romantic relationship with the famed sculptor, which was chronicled in a 1988 French film. Although her story is intertwined with Rodin's, she had a great deal of individual success and her style was very much her own during her mature period. She exhibited her work at the Salon d'Automne and the Salon d'Independence in Paris. Some of her most famous surviving works are The Waltz, 1892-1905. A dynamic rendering of a semi-nude couple wrapped in flowing fabric as they dance. Other works include The Implorer, 1900, and The Flute Player, 1904. Is Lisa playing coy? Leonardo da Vinci used a technique called sfumato, which means smoky in Italian. And he applied sfumato techniques to the corners of the Mona Lisa's eyes and her mouth, creating the famous ambiguity of personality. Because of this, Lisa's mood seems to change upon every viewing. And sometimes it feels like she's in on the joke. Sfumato also helps add to the realism of the portrait, making Mona Lisa appear to live and breathe. When we look at the Mona Lisa, we are as close as we can get to the genius of Leonardo da Vinci. At some point in history, he sat in a room with this woman, mere feet apart, and painted her from life. The painting is a virtuoso work, an example of da Vinci's immense skill, and an enduring masterpiece. What is a centrally planned church? A centrally planned church is a church with the altar at the center and was often used for baptisteries or tombs. The Church of Santa Costanza is an example of a centrally planned church featuring a central altar surrounded by an ambulatory. The ambulatory is made up of paired Corinthian columns. The Church of Santa Costanza was originally covered in elaborate mosaics and marble. What is Chinoiserie? The word Chinoiserie comes from French and roughly translates to Chinese esque. As European explorers reached increasingly distant locations across the globe during the 17th and 18th centuries, Europe became more and more exposed to diverse art and culture. Chinese art was particularly popular during the 19th century. And the wealthy collected Chinese porcelain, sculpture, and other decorative arts. European artists eventually began to incorporate Chinese design elements into their own decorative arts. In 1762, a ten-story Chinese-style pagoda was built in Kew Gardens in London. And serves as an example of the both the Rococo aesthetic and Western interest in Asian style. Who is Shireen Neshet?
Shirin Neshet, 1957, is an Iranian-American photographer and video artist whose photographs frequently explore stereotypes of Muslim women. Her later video work, including Tuba, 2002, and Logic of the Birds. 2002, explores spiritual themes through Quranic symbolism and music. How did Buddhism influence Japanese art? Pure Land Buddhism Jodo in Japanese, was the primary form of Buddhism in Japan. As well as China, coming to particular prominence during the Heian period. Jodo remains the most popular type of Buddhism in Japan. The Amitabha Buddha, known in Japan as Amitabha Buddha, was an important subject in sculpture and painting, as was the concept of paradise. Esoteric Buddhism was also important in Japan, where it was called Mikya. Highly influenced by Hinduism, Esoteric Buddhism is hierarchical and features many complex deities. An important visual element of Esoteric Buddhism are mandaras, mandalas in Sanskrit. Cosmic diagrams of the universe used in ritual, meditation, and teaching. The womb world mandara from the Heian period, is one of the oldest and most well-preserved Japanese examples. The work is filled with images of gods and Buddhas, and a central image of Dainichi, the universal Buddha. Some of the gods have multiple heads and limbs. And many hold lightning bolts, which symbolize the power of the mind. What is St. Peter's Square? St. Peter's Square is far from rectangular. From an aerial perspective it actually looks like a keyhole, an oval next to a trapezoid. The space serves as a grand entrance to St. Peter's Basilica at the Vatican. The heart of the Catholic Church. It is defined by a quadruple road colonnade that extends from the basilica's facade and then wraps around an ovoid piazza. Framing a central obelisk brought from Egypt by Roman Emperor Caligula. The shape of the colonnade has been described as a mother's arms that reach out from the church to embrace the worshippers who gather there. Gian Lorenzo Bernini's design for St. Peter's Square. Known in Italian as Piazza San Pietro, is probably his best known architectural project. It was an incredible challenge to design a space that could contain the crowds that come to the Vatican to hear the Pope. And to unify a space that contains styles from so many different periods of history. Bernini's design included hundreds of columns and pillars, along with hundreds of statues of saints. Like the Church of I. El Gisu, Bernini's Piazza San Pietro incorporates many different architectural elements. And yet it maintains a grand and harmonious feel. When did printmaking begin? By the 16th century, printing technology, such as the woodcut, 
had been around for hundreds of years, first developing in China in the 5th century. Printmaking was first used to apply patterns to textiles, and then later was used on paper. Intaglio processes, such as engraving and etching, developed in Germany in the middle of the 15th century. Evolved from techniques used by goldsmiths and jewelers. Printmaking allowed artists to make multiple copies of a text or an image. And mass production of prints began in the 16th century, forever changing the consumption of art images and texts. What was Joshua Reynolds' grand manner? Joshua Reynolds, 1723-1792, was determined to elevate the status of British painting to that of the great masters of the Renaissance. And one of the ways in which he did this was to infuse his portraits. With the grandeur and heroic idealism of the highest form of painting at the time, history painting. In his series of lectures, 15 Discourses on Art. Reynolds promoted the idea that contemporary British painters should paint in the great style of the old masters. His enormous, full-length portraits, such as Portrait of Jane Fleming, Countess of Harrington. 1778, and Lady Sarah Bunbury sacrificing to the graces, 1765, incorporate classical elements such as sculpture, vases, and architectural elements into the background to give his paintings an element of antiquity. In the latter portrait, Lady Bunbury is depicted as a Roman priestess. With her long Roman dress banded at the waist and pinned to the shoulder. As Lady Bunbury makes an offering to the Three Graces. Her friend Lady Susan Fox Strangways kneels beside her. Reynolds has elevated this aristocratic portrait to a symbolic. Meaningful painting that inspires reflection on female friendship and beauty. Why was Honor Domier arrested? Honor Domier, 1808-1879, was a painter and famous lithographer whose cartoons were regular features in Parisian newspapers. His realist works tended to focus on the plight of the urban poor and frequently criticized the French government, including Louis Philippe, which got him into trouble. His 1831 lithograph, Gargantua, published in the comic journal La Caricature, depicted the king as Gargantua, a grotesque character from the books of French Renaissance writer Rabelais. The king is large and bloated, with thin legs and a pointed head. He sits, enthroned, while poverty-stricken French subjects carry heavy loads of offerings in baskets up a ramp, directly to the king's open mouth. Aristocratic scavengers huddle underneath the ramp, hoping to catch any dropping coins. While in the far right corner, a poor, malnourished woman attempts to feed her baby. Such a negative depiction of the king resulted in a fine of 500 francs and a six-month jail term. For Domier on the charge of inciting contempt for the government and personally insulting the king. 
This punishment did not stop the artist as in a later lithograph, called Freedom of the Press. 1834, Daumier aggressively criticized government censorship. The work of Honor Daumier demonstrates the role of art as social commentary as well as the power of both image and text. Who was Georgia O'Keeffe? Although Georgia O'Keeffe, 1887-1986, is quite popular for her large, highly detailed paintings of flowers, throughout her career she painted a range of subjects from New York City skyscrapers to dessert scenes, cow skulls, and adobe architecture. O'Keeffe was a modernist painter whose work was highly distilled and so precise it could border on the abstract. Georgia O'Keeffe's first solo show was in 1917 at the 921 Gallery. Run by photographer and collector Alfred Stieglitz, who she later married. After his death in 1946, O'Keeffe permanently relocated to New Mexico where she was interested in the sun's effect on the visual quality of objects and lived an isolated life. Her work oscillates between realism and abstraction. And her powerful images have brought her celebrity status as an artist. What is the difference between Theravada Buddhism and Mahayana Buddhism? Theravada Buddhism is the earliest form of the religion and is called the Path of the Elders. It is most popular in India, Sri Lanka, and parts of mainland Southeast Asia. Mahayana Buddhism is the second important school of Buddhism and is known as the Great Path. Mahayana Buddhist worship bodhisattvas, compassionate Buddhist to be who understand the path to enlightenment and devote themselves to teaching others who to achieve nirvana. Mahayana Buddhism is popular in northern India, China, Japan, Korea, and Nepal. What is a painted screen? In Japan, painted folding screens, called biobu, were popular in the imperial houses of the elite military rulers of the Momoyama period. While many of these castles and houses no longer exist, 17th century screens made by the Kano family remain. Compared to Western standards, 17th century Japanese houses were very empty. With no furniture or decorative trinkets filling interior spaces. Instead, movable screens were painted in bold colors. Often depicting nature, landscapes, and genre scenes. Painted screens by the Kano family include Cypress Tree, an eight-fold work attributed to Kano Itoku, 1543-1590, which was originally used as a sliding door. The artist emphasized the texture of the bark of the tree while simplifying the background. 
which serves to monumentalize the tree and evoke the vastness of nature. Who was Joseph Cornell? Joseph Cornell, 1903-1972, was a self-taught American artist and filmmaker from New York. Who experimented with surrealist collage and assemblage, and is most celebrated for his shadow. Boxes filled with meticulously curated objets trouvés, found objects. Which exhibit the artist's eclectic and intellectual interests from astronomy to arcades, from ballet to film. Cornell exhibited his work at the surrealist Julian Levy Gallery. Bringing distinction to the art of assemblage. Cornell's boxes have been interpreted as constructivist. And have also been likened to visual poems, filled with surprising, often playful objects. For example, homage to the romantic ballet. 1942, holds six frosted glass cubes on a reflective plate above a blue, velvet surface. On the inside of the lid is an inscription a lyrical telling of a carriage ride on a moonlit night. Another piece, untitled, Hotel Eden, 1945, features a cutout of a tropical bird. Whitewashed wood, and paint splattered newsprint, which creates a nostalgic image of paradise. Many of Cornell's assemblages are on display at the Art Institute of Chicago. Who is A.I. Weiwei? A.I. Weiwei, 1957 is a Chinese contemporary artist and political activist known for working in a variety of media. Including painting, sculpture, and installations. Wei Wei, who has shown his work internationally, was arrested by Chinese police in 2011 and detained for tax evasion. And has since not been allowed to leave the country or speak publicly about his arrest. A.I. Weiwei's work is often political, contemplative, and humorous. Many of his works, such as his Colored Vases, 2006, series, evoke a sense of emptiness. What is the archaic smile? Take a good look at an archaic kuros or kora sculpture and you may notice a subtle yet light-hearted smile playing on its lips. The close-lipped archaic smile gives cold stone sculptures a sense of warmth and life. Over six feet tall, the Berlin Kora, 570 to 560 BCE. Has remnants of red paint and depicts a poised, column like woman. Her robes fall rigidly and the folds in the fabric look almost like the fluting of a Doric column. She also holds a pomegranate, which therefore links her to the mythological deity Persephone, who was abducted by Hades and taken to the underworld as his wife. Contrasting the otherwise stoic austerity of the work. The Berlin Kora features a warm archaic smile, which brings her to life.
Who is David Hockney? David Hockney, 1937, is considered an important early pop artist. Though he dislikes that association and his work demonstrates a range of styles. A prominent contemporary artist whose career kick-started while he was still a student at the Royal College of Art in London. Hockney's early work frequently incorporated poetic fragments and personal themes. Paintings such as We Two Boys Together Clinging, 1961, are reminiscent of the art brood of Jean. Du Buffet with scrawled handwriting and childlike forms. Hockney's mid-career paintings are notably smooth and painted with acrylic. Reflecting the artist's skill as a graphic artist as well as a painter. His most famous pop artwork is arguably, The Big Splash, 1967. A brightly painted scene of a California swimming pool in which a jarring and geometric diving board juts into the center of the scene. A swirled splash breaks the smooth monotony of the pool's blue water, creating a photo-like image. In the 1970s and 80s, he experimented with collage by incorporating Polaroid fragments into highly ordered paintings. His work with photography led to a prestigious award from the Royal Photographic Society in 2003 Hockney continues to paint and receive recognition for his work, including monumental landscapes such as a bigger Grand Canyon. 1998, which is composed of over 60 individual paintings. Who is Yinka Shoni Bear, MBE? Yinka Shonabir, 1962, is a British-Nigerian artist whose work takes many forms. Including video, photography, installation, and performance. Some of his most well-known work questions racial identity. And relationships between cultures in a post-colonial world. His sculptural work. Scramble for Africa, 2003 Depicts headless European leaders dressed in European-style clothes made with African printed fabrics as they divide up the resources of the continent amongst themselves. He was made a member of the British Empire, MBE, by Britain's Queen Elizabeth II in 2005. What is Moctezuma's crown? Moctezuma was the Aztec leader at the time of the Spanish conquest of the Aztec Empire. Led by Hernan Cortes. His crown was made of colorful feathers, from birds such as macaw parrots and the Quetzal bird which were gathered into bunches and then sewn into a reed frame studded with precious stones. The long feathers of Moctezuma's crown are dark green and the reed frame is painted in bright reds and light blues. The provenance of the crown has come under much scholarly debate but there is evidence that the crown was given to Cortes by Moctezuma himself. The crown was sent back to Europe on one of Cortes' ships and given to Charles V. The Holy Roman Emperor and King of Spain.
the headdress is currently in Austria, and negotiations are underway for the Austrian government to loan the crown back to Mexico for the first time in over 500 years. How is the Italian Renaissance different from the Renaissance in Northern Europe? The Renaissance is said to have started in Italy and spread slowly north into the rest of Europe. This is not quite true, however. While the Italians were especially interested in classical art, they lived amongst Roman ruins after all. Artists from Northern European countries such as France, Germany and the Netherlands had different interests. While artists of the Italian Renaissance were interested in the idealized nude, classical architecture, and single-point perspective, Northern European painting of the time is characterized by intense realism and attention to detail. Northern artists were interested in the material quality of objects in the visible world. Important artists of the Northern Renaissance include Jan van Eyck, Roger van der Weyden, and Klaus Slutter. What is printmaking? Printmaking is a mechanical process that allows an artist to make multiple copies of an image. One of the earliest types of printmaking is woodblock printing. A process popular in Japan and China for over a thousand years. To make a woodblock print, an artist carves a relief image into a block of wood. Inks the raised surface of the wood and then presses the block against paper to make the printed image. Polychrome prints, or prints with multiple colors, can also be made by carving additional blocks. Lining up the image, a process called registering, and pressing again. Contemporary artists continue to use this process. Linoleum is a popular alternative to wood and prints made this way are called lino cuts. Other types of printmaking include intaglio, which was invented in the 15th century. Intaglio involves incising an image, usually into a sheet of metal such as a copper plate, and filling the grooved lines with ink before pressing the image. In intaglio printing, the printed image will be the reverse of the image on the metal plate. Common intaglio techniques include engraving, etching, dry point, and aqua tint. What is a ribbed vault? Unlike the rounded barrel vault so closely associated with the Romanesque style. Ribbed vaults are more structurally effective than thick walls. Allowing cathedrals like Durham to reach new heights, and ushering in the Gothic age. Looking much like the human ribs, a ribbed vault is composed of a fanning framework. A piped masonry that supports the weight of the ceiling and walls of a building. Who was Paul Gauguin?
one of the most famous of the French post-impressionists, Paul Gauguin. 1848-1903, struggled to find critical success during his lifetime. But is now considered to be an innovator who made a major impact on early 20th century modern art. He was primarily a painter, but also worked in sculpture, ceramics, printmaking, and writing. Gauguin identified with the 19th century symbolist movement. And his bold, flatly colored paintings often hold significant symbolic meaning. In 1891, he expressed a desire to shed the corrupting influence of modern civilization and fled to Tahiti where he spent the majority of the rest of his life living in poverty and working on paintings infused with symbolism. Mythology, and Tahitian subject matter, in what is considered a precursor of primitivism. Even before leaving for French Polynesia, Gauguin's work shows evidence of inspiration from folk art. His painting The Yellow Christ, 1889, depicts the crucifixion in Brittany, in northern France. Local women encircle Christ, kneeling in prayer. The bold, flat colors of the painting are reminiscent of medieval Christian painting and emphasize the power and intangibility of prayer. Later works include Tea No Arios, The Seed of the Arioi, 1892. Two Tahitian Women, 1899, and Nevermore. 1897, a painting that mixes the influence of Edgar Allan Poe. The traditional female nude, and Tahitian imagery. Who is Mona Hatoum? Mona Hatoum, 1952, is a Palestinian video and installation. Artist who was raised in Lebanon and works primarily in Britain. Hatoum's conceptual installations and performance pieces often communicate themes of exile and authority. Examples of her work include the minimalist Sokol du Monde, Base of the World, 1992 to 1993 A large black cube that contrasts a metallic interior structure with a softer, more organic exterior embellishment. What is Tassili and Adger? Tassili Anajar is an approximately 7,000 year old in southeastern Algeria with thousands of rock paintings and engravings one of the earliest and most impressive examples of rock art in Africa. During the time when many of the images were made, this section of the Sahara Desert was a grassy plain and the paintings include images of elephants, hippopotami, and giraffes. Later images depict men, women, and children gathered around small houses, cattle grazing nearby. As the Sahara dried over thousands of years, new animals appear in the rock art. Such as camels and horses introduced from nearby Egypt. Who was Suzuki Harunobu? Suzuki Harunobu, 
1724-1770. Was an innovative Edo printmaker who was the first to produce multicolored prints. He became famous for his Nishiki, brocade, prints of beautiful courtesans. Including geisha as a Daruma crossing the sea, mid-18th century, which depicts an elegant woman wrapped in a red cloak. Staring into the wind as nearby reeds seem to rustle behind her. The print is an example of Haranobu's mastery of color, and of the popularity of not only courtesan scenes, but also of theater in ukiyo-e painting, as the woman takes on the persona of the mythological Daruma. During the Edo period, stylized kabuki theater was extremely popular. And pictures like this often depicted popular actors and characters from the stage. Suzuki Harunobu was one of the most commercially successful artists working in Edo. Tokyo, and his multicolored prints helped to popularize the ukiyo-e style. What is Pacific art? Pacific art covers the art of cultures in Oceania, Polynesia, Melanesia, and Micronesia. This includes countries such as Australia, New Zealand, and Papua New Guinea. And territories such as Easter Island, Samoa, Fiji, Tonga, and the U.S. state of Hawaii. The art of these regions is sometimes referred to as oceanic art. Pacific art forms and subject matter can vary greatly from culture to culture and can include paintings, ritual masks, wood and stone carvings, domestic and monumental architecture, textiles, and body art. What was Cahokia? Cahokia was the largest pre-Columbian city in what is now the United States, and peaked in size with a population of nearly 25. 000 between the years 800 and 1500 bigger than the city of London at the time. Like the Great Serpent Mound, Cahokia was built by the Mississippian people. And featured numerous earthen mounds the result of a huge labor effort. There were around 120 mounds at Cahokia, the largest, known as Monk's Mound. Was 100 feet tall, aligned to the sun and possibly used as some kind of astronomical observatory in a manner similar to Stonehenge. Evidence of the city can be seen in southern Illinois. What is a stupa? A stupa is a hemispherical Buddhist monument based on Southeast Asian burial mounds, but not used as a tomb. After his death, the Buddha's cremated remains were placed in small containers known as reliquaries and buried in the earthen stupas. Buddhist pilgrims worship the Buddha's remains by walking clockwise around the stupa which mirrors the revolutions of the earth and sun. Stupas do not have to be large some of them are small enough to fit in the palm of a hand. They represent the Buddhist concept of the world mountain and are sacred diagrams of the universe.
Who was Nam June Paik? Nam June Paik, 1932-2006, was a Korean-American artist who worked in many different media. Creating videotapes, paintings, sculptures, robots, laser installations, and writing. He is best known as an innovator in video art. Paik joined Fluxus while studying in Germany and was later inspired by the experimental composer and artist John Cage, who he met and befriended in 1958. Paik used the video as a structural component in his sculptures and installations. For example, he made a cello by stacking television sets and stringing them together with cello strings. He also made a bra out of two television screens in a work titled, TV Bra for Living Sculpture, 1969. Which he designed to be worn by cello player and collaborator, Charlotte Mormon, while she performed. Pake's Video Flag X, 1985, is another example of video used in sculpture a series of Television screens are arranged in a grid pattern to display an image of the American flag. 